Uh, Dave, how's it going? It has been quite the week. Um, I guess that's the best way to put it. It's been, in a, you know, what a, what a, what an insane week. And, uh, you know, you, I don't even know what to say sometimes. Um, it's, uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's stuff going on in WWE and we don't know, you know, there's so much stuff going on. There's so much uncertainty when it comes to, um, I mean, it's funny because when I was, uh, putting together the issue this last week and talking to various different people about it and, uh, you know, and, and, and somewhat the Vince wanting to come back, you know, was, was turned out to be part of this because of the uncertainty of the future in the sense for, for a long, long time, we thought, ah, you know, these TV rights are going to go up forever and WWE is going to make a killing and WWE is going to be sold because these media companies have so much money. And, and I, I just think it was a given. Right. And now it's like, you know, I mean, it's still going to happen, but we don't know what kind of money because everyone in, you know, like whether it's everyone in, in that business is not in the mood to spend a lot of money because they're all uncertain because, uh, you know, the ad buys and television are so far down and the streaming is not profitable. And, you know, some of these companies are still making tons and tons of money, but maybe not as much as they want to. And so money is in many ways tighter and maybe getting tighter as we go on. We don't know. So, um, you know, and then with Vince, I mean, it really is. If, if for some reason it drops, it becomes a bad time to sell. Right now is still a very good time to sell. Um and, you know, for, you know, the it, it's it's time to start negotiating the rights. I mean, the um, the new deal would be up in uh, October or end of September 2024. So we're a long way away. But, uh, you know, this year, you know, latter, the latter part of the year would be when you would start to negotiate. And Vince, you know, um, was basically he would not approve of any, you know, as the leading shareholder, he wasn't going to approve of any deals unless he was brought back. And that's essentially what happened? I mean, they voted, the board of directors voted on December 27th unanimously that they didn't want him back. And here we are, you know, uh, January 6th and he's back. And so um, how does that, how does that actually work though? So when he wrote that letter to, uh, I, I mean the, the letter that, that I guess suggests like, Hey, I, I want to come back. And they say, no, what, why did he need to write that letter? If he could just bring himself back? Uh, I guess formalities, I think legal, okay. for, everything's legal formalities. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Well, it wasn't, he couldn't just, but he did. I mean, I guess, you know, he always had that power to do it, but you would think that, you know, the board was going to protect the shareholders. Um, and because of that, that they wouldn't allow it and he couldn't override the board, but what he could always do is replace. And we always knew he could, he could replace board members and stack the board. So, um, but there was the feeling of the, would he really go that far and of course being vince uh he he would of course he, he wanted he wanted back so right now i mean you know and i've talked to some people in wwe uh today and some have called me to explain the situation as of right now the idea is and, and it's been said publicly that he's only back to negotiate the tv deal and he's back to negotiate the sale he's that Paul is still going to, Paul Levesque still going to be running creative, that Stephanie and Nick are still CEOs, they're still running the company, so there's not the big changes where, like, what's going to happen, uh, which yesterday, there were those questions, but, you know, again, I think everybody kind of is looking at this going, like, is that really what's going to happen, and uh, being very skeptical of that uh, in the long run, because Vince wanted, Vince wanted back to run the thing, I mean, that's what he wanted, that's what he was looking for a week ago. So he didn't get that. I think right now it's kind of like this attempt at a, uh, you know, the, the, a public thing where it looks like everything's cool. Everything's the same. There are no big changes other than they're going to sell. And the news that they're going to sell has shot the stock price through the roof. Yeah. Um, which was the saving grace, because if he had come back without that, we're going to sell. Um, there would be people going, oh, my God, there's going to be a court fight. There's going to be this. There's going to be chaos. The stock price would probably crater. But by saying we're going to sell now, it's like way up. And now, you know, it, you know, the big the big fear of the stock dropping if Vince comes back. It's like at least for right now, you know, and some people think that he's just making up the sale. Like they've been they've been, I would say, like what I would call in the market since 2016. I mean, nobody has made that offer 
that they couldn't refuse. But they, you know, I mean, from the time, like if they had gotten four million in 2016 when Dana, when when uh, Lorenzo got the four million offer, they just sold. And I mean, I mean, many people know that, but they never got that offer. And now they probably could get a lot more because this, it's it's worth a lot more. And you know what? You know, I mean, there's like so many different things. But I mean, the, the idea of, and I think this is also the timing is is that if they Nick Khan and Stephanie had, let's say they had negotiated a sale. And I'm sure that there's been talk with different people because like with NBC universal, they're almost, you know, it's just, it's almost like an inevitable. It's like, why pay, um, you know, whatever it's going to be hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars every single year for this product, when you can just buy it for, you know, eight years worth, if you think it's a long-term product and it, and it probably is, um, even if it's not, even if tell it's not long for television, you still have your streaming capabilities and it's still going to be a very valuable product. Um, you know, I mean, not hundred percent for sure, but good, good chance, you know, that it'll, that'll remain a valuable property, you know, property. So, um, you know, it, but if, if they sold, if they did a sale, I mean, he would not approve it because he'd be out. I mean, that'd be it. Once they're sold, Vince doesn't have the shares. He can't come back. Do you think that has something to do with the timing of him doing this now? Did was, was there maybe talks were getting a little bit more heated when it came to a sale? I'm trying to figure out what his timing is here. I think you know I you know, I mean I I have not heard of any um thing where they were close. I mean just media speculation that is that was all through last year. You know, it's one of the reasons the stock price grew last year as well was the feeling that they're going to be sold for a really big amount of money and if you buy the stock you know, you'll get a great return on it, um, which is, you know, again, the reason that went way up, uh, you know, since since uh, last night. Um, so I, as far as like the timing, I think the timing is more he just wanted back. And this was a way to get back while while not cratering the stock price and not causing the conflict. And it's kind of like a deal, you know, I don't say a deal, but it's kind of an understood thing that, Hey, everything's fine and nothing's going to change. And, and we're not going to be, you know, it's not the old Vince. He's not even going to be in charge. He's just negotiating, you know, a TV deal and, or involved with that. And, you know, it's a lot of different pressures and things and, uh, you know, but yeah, he's, he's back and it's, uh, you know, I mean, every, you know, people, you know, even people who are allied with him, um, you know, aligned with him, you know, were, uh, I would say, I, you know, everyone's different, but I know people that, that were very aligned with him that were not happy that he was trying to come back. And, uh, you know, now he is, he's back and, you know, again, it's business as usual. He hasn't returned to his office or anything like that. He's not in Memphis tonight for the wrestling. Okay. That was going to be one of my questions was, is it possible he shows up on TV? Well, I, I don't think, I don't think this week. Um, I mean, that's the word, you know, is that he's not, I mean, the word is that he's, he's not even returning to his office. So I mean, we'll see how long that lasts. So the stock opened today at $80 and five share, uh, five cents a share. The high was eighty nine dollars and forty three cents, and uh, it ended at, at close today eighty four dollars and twenty seven cents. So, uh, did that that stock moved these last couple of days here? Um, so, did you see anything about the uh, the meeting that that happened today? I have not because we were uh, doing the show with Mike, so okay. I, I actually have not heard about the the meeting this afternoon. Okay, I so I'm just taking this from. Uh, Pro Wrestling Insider Mike Johnson. So he said uh, the highlights of the meeting, uh, they officially announced Vince was back on the board. They reiterated what you said, no changes to management or responsibilities. Uh, it was also pushed that the move uh, the move was a big positive and of made to, to give the company everything they needed to make the most of their future rights, revenue sales. Um. The idea is they would be looking at potential sale offers ahead of any rights nego negotiations in case that would be a greater benefit than another round of just selling TV rights. But it was also greatly emphasized that a sale may not happen and it should not be assumed it would. The final say would go to Vince. And this is the most interesting, I think, of what was reported. It was also mentioned that a possible avenue for the company could be for it to be taken private again if it was the best outcome for shareholders or maybe share. Well, that would mean that would mean, you know, um, 
financing, you know, like, um, you know, maybe, I mean, it, it would be, it would be purchased. That would be mean it would be purchased by a, somebody with a lot of money who would then, you know, put the right, you know, keep it going the way it is. I mean, one of the things, like I said, with, with the idea of the purchase is that Vince would want to sell to somebody who would, you know, let him run it at least for a while. I mean, there's, there's no guarantees, but maybe there would even be something like that. You know, whereas if these people sold it without Vince, which, you know, he had that veto power over it, which, which he was going to exercise. He was not going to approve any sale. Like we said all along, like for a long time, it was like, you know, Vince was going to, you know, the company was going to be sold. And then as soon as Vince was out, it was like, I was thinking like, you know, Vince can't let it be sold if he has any inclination of wanting to come back. It can't be sold because then he's out and he has no way in. If now that he's in control of the sale, um, you know, he can negotiate a sale with somebody who wants to keep him in. So it changes everything. And But I mean, the, the, the other thing is Vince is still 77 years old and he's not, you know, no matter what anyone says, he's not going to be there forever. Um, and I don't know how many more years. So, so it's still like, again, you know, 10 years from now, I mean, who knows? I mean, but I, I don't see like 87 year old Vince McMahon running this company, but stranger things have happened. I don't dismiss it as a possibility either. But taking it private would also mean that a lot of the stuff that's come out public, like they wouldn't, I mean, maybe it would still get leaked, but like the, 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 the stuff that has been getting him in, in, in trouble, right? Like um, the, all the, NDAs and such of the, that have come out like if you take it private a lot of that stuff stays in, in the background right yes some of it would um i mean it's funny because for all those years you know the, you know number one you know going public made them a ton of money but the other part of going public that they really liked was the respect that they thought it gave the company you know that we're a, a publicly traded company we're not you know we're not some you know like the 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 um reputation that wrestling had i mean they were very gung-ho on the idea that that um you know we're a publicly traded company we're not just old carny wrestling um in other ways obviously you know going private you know you can hide your books and you can hide your financials and you can say whatever you want and you can do whatever you want and you're not under sec scrutiny so there is you know i mean i remember and again obviously this changed but i remember when uh when ufc started riding really high and the thing was just look at WWE. They went private. They made all this money. And they go, you know, why don't you guys do it? And Dana was the last thing we ever want to do is go public, which, of course, now with the new owners, in fact, um, they do. And it, it is interesting that um, it wasn't that long ago when, um, oh, I forgot who it was with, with um, Endeavor, which is the parent company of UFC. And they were just asked about buying WWE. Would you be interested in buying WWE? And they said, well, you know, nobody's offered it to us. So we haven't talked about it, but they certainly felt that that was something that they would look at doing. You know, I mean, you imagine, you know, you know, Ari Emanuel owning both UFC and WWE. I mean, there's a lot of other people who would want it. I mean, you know, obviously um, NBCU would have to be the favorite just because um, they're the ones spending the most money on the rights. And then you 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 reported, and and I I also saw this where John. Oren, that was like his one of his big predictions of the year was NBC would get SmackDown and, and put it on primetime on, on, well, on the broadcast channel. Without saying, um, you know, I mean, the thing that I, you know, you know, and I, I know better than most when it comes to speculating on people's sources, because um, I know with me, it's like 95 percent of the time they're 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 so wrong and it's almost <laughs> laughable. But 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 but. Um, there are people who I know that are very close to people at sports business journal and they would know, um, you know what I mean? When I read that, I thought this is very, very credible because I know who talks to them. I think, well, I, I do know, but, but the point is, is that like, it's not, that's not some guy throwing something out as a prediction. That's something that, that is certainly being discussed if he's saying it. You know, it's 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 more than just, oh, you know, sometimes I'll say stuff like that. And be, oh, he's just throwing it out. It's like, yeah, usually it's not. Mm -hmm. Usually it's like I know something's going on behind the scenes. And, and that would be what the John O'Ran thing. I'm relatively certain that that would be what that is. And 10 years ago, NBC in primetime, you wouldn't fathom the, the number that no. that SmackDown would do. But now not a chance that, that but number. Now, but, 
they, they, they win Friday nights. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, the idea of NBC putting them on Friday night from 8 to 10 um, is not far-fetched at all. If it was five years ago, I would say never happened. But, you know, television programming has gone down so fast and wrestling hasn't gone down that fast. So wrestling is more and more, you know, WWE is more and more valuable. And I mean, in theory, AEW is more and more valuable. But I don't really, you know, I mean, that's a different ball game right now. But, um, but you know, um, and other wrestling people don't care about. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, obviously, no, we, you know, as far as like, you know, Tony didn't sell Ring of Honor. So it wasn't like there was like, uh, you know, right. I mean, people had a chance to buy it. It'd be, you know, it's it would be the number three co- company in the country if Tony ran it separately. And there was not, you know, obviously from the way that that deal went down, that there was not, there's, there were not the big takers, even though he didn't offer it outside of WBD, which he's admitted to, you know, that, that it was only, he only offered it to WBD stations, but they, the fact is they didn't take it. So that tells you, um, you know, again, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's not that people are looking for more wrestling, but they are looking for WWE and, and perhaps AEW. I mean, we'll find out that, you know, in the next year or two. Back to sort of the media landscape, uh, you know, from everything that I've been reading, kind of where the the rubber meets the road here with streaming is the companies who do the best job of maximizing their revenue from all of their users and controlling the churn as well as trying to grow, which is like this, you know, that that is, a, I'm sure, a, a puzzle. For these companies to unlock because there's so many competitors in, in the streaming uh, marketplace it, it would seem like it like almost I, I would almost think that wow maybe maybe wwe kind of missed their boat here on on th- the timing of, of trying to sell this thing just because these companies are don't look to be like spe- like the uh the cfo of, of warner brothers media is just like yeah everybody spent so much money for the for this stuff and it's really not worth as much as as they spent so that right. tells me that that's what they're thinking is is we're not going to get caught up in this spending war which doesn't seem to bode well for wwe being up for sale anytime soon so that's the timing of that when i read that from vince i was like oh wow everything that i've been reading sort of says you know well this the marketplace is a little bit different based on the the what yeah you know it is spend. and that may that may be why vince like you know forced the hand right now because the feeling is, is that like, if I wait five years, cause I mean, they got, you know, let's face it. Like they got a sweetheart deal that made no economic sense from, from Peacock. And, uh, you know, those type of deals in, in the long run have to come down to earth. And, you know, maybe right now, because, uh, you know, right. You know, it's like when we're at the stage where things are coming down to earth, um, it, the company may not be as valuable. So, you know, this, this may be the tail end of the time and maybe even six months ago or nine months ago would have been even better. But the idea is, is maybe it's like, we've got to, if we wait too long, it won't be worth as much maybe. And if that's the case, um, we got to make the move now. And so Vince is positioning himself. I mean, like to where, you know, it's, it's got to go through me and I got to be in the negotiations, which, which kind of had to happen anyway, because of uh, being a leading shareholder, you know, his ability to block any sale, um, you know, that's, that's part of the deal, but there, put it this way. If it's just, it was just Vince wanting to sell and having to okay and rubber stamp a sale, there would not be this court fight. There would not be a board of directors vote that would go, you know, unanimously against him. All the stuff that happened in the last week that now everyone has to pretend didn't happen because they're trying to present, you know, a unified company. And they're also happy that Vince is back and how wonderful it is when, like again on December 27th, that board voted unanimously. We do not want you back. And you know, noted that there's one of the reasons is is there's stuff that the people don't know that hasn't come out, whatever that means, which they had mentioned. You know, uh, and I don't know what that is, but but they had mentioned that is one of the reasons why they thought him coming back was not in the best, and that's why, you know, some of the people who were heavily involved in the investigation and probably know the most as far as like the background of everything, why they're gone from the board now. So this was not a, you know, everyone's happy thing. Obviously the, the turnover of the board tells you right there that this was not as, this was anything but a smooth thing. Yeah. The, the, um, the folks who, who left. So Vince 
brings back himself and Wilson and Barrios. They removed three people, and then there were two others who stepped away, right? Yeah, two others uh, quit today. And one of them was, um, it was the Sony guy, I think. Sing. Sing, Sing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he was the guy, um, he was the head of the investigation. Now, I also should point out, because they, they told me this, is that all of the members of the board were all aware of everything that was happening. I mean, aside from just that, obviously they, they knew because they wrote the letter and he wrote the first letter and then they wrote the letter December 27th. Yeah. But there was an awareness of this for some time that he was trying to get back and obviously that they were trying to block him from getting back. Um, so, so um, you know, the idea that that the top, top people were blindsided by Vince's move is well, obviously they weren't blindsided because they knew he was trying and they knew that what he could do to, to get in. But, um, you know, like as far as like some people are worried about people who are recent hires or people that have been fired that are now back type of thing. And well, you know, the, the, the people who hired him, did they know? And the, the answer is, is they, they absolutely knew for some time that this was a possibility. Yes. So there you go. And that was uh, another thing that I saw a lot of people bring up is that, you know the talent um how, how this affects the talent and one of the 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 big examples is regal leaving aw coming back to, to wwe and before when vince was in charge that's when he he got let go um i, I imagine there's a, a lot of anxiety going around because they don't necessarily know what it means or maybe they don't trust vince's statement about how you know he's just going to do his that, thing well, and leave that, everyone that yeah but that's what they're all going to be told you know i mean the savvy ones will will know that anything's possible and yes they're probably you know pro probably some uh some weird you know weird moments i mean it is you know i mean the you know i i mean i again the regal situation is certainly something that everyone's talking about but i mean i don't know that it will affect him and i know you know again right now you know levesque is still going to have that same power and, um, you know, and if there's a sale, you know, who knows what's going to happen if there's a sale? Yeah. Um, so I guess the only other things I was thinking about relating to this is, uh, you know, the, the battle for the talent between the, the two companies. And, um, you know, there's been this whole discussion online about whether or not FTR is going back to WWE or if they're going to stay in AEW. And I, I just kind of wonder if just that just his shadow the vince mcmahon shadow uh, of being there even without doing anything if that affects how what, well, what kind of leverage these wrestlers may have or may not have no they still have the same they still have the similar leverage but um you know the you know there's an uncertainty um you know it's always you know yeah if you're thinking about everything it's cer it's certainly something that you have to think about um you know you can't pretend it doesn't exist because you're being naive but I mean, as far as like, there's still two companies and if you have some value, you know, I think both companies will want you and, you know, you'll be able to make good money, um, you know, so I don't think that that's going to change. Then again, if they're set up for a sale, if they're really trying to get the books in order for a sale, you know, Vince could go right back to the the cutting, um, you know, um, that's, that's very possible. I don't like, I don't expect any big moves in the next couple of weeks or even months, but down the line, I mean, all bets are off down the line. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh something to watch. I, I know oh, it's crazy. Uh, everybody, everybody's prediction show, you know, there was a Vince, does Vince come back to WWE prediction? And I, I mean, I didn't know anything, but it was always, it was always a possibility for sure, but I, I didn't think that it was going to be so easy for him, I guess, not really understanding the lay of the land and, and how, how he, well, could, he well, could do it. I guess it looks easy, but obviously it wasn't, you know, because they had to go through a bunch of stuff. And I mean, in him being back, I mean, I'm guessing that, that there were some negotiations to avoid potential court fights where it could have been really, really messy. And I think that's the, the, the statement of, I'm only coming back to facilitate the sale on the um and the rights deal, and that's it. It's probably part of an agreement to not get into the fight that they could have gotten into, um, because that fight wouldn't be beneficial to the company. And this way, everyone kind of coexists, and and that's where we are right now. You know, um, you know, when we start seeing like 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 
you know, Paul's going to run the show. Paul's the one in Gorilla, not Vince. Um, you know, if one day we hear that, hey, guess who was in Gorilla this week? It was Vince. <laughs> you know, then everything reverts back to what it was before. And, um, you know, do I think that that isn't going to happen? I, I think all bets are off. Anything could happen. Do, do I think it won't ha it will happen in the next month or two? No, I don't believe it'll happen right away. Granny, let's do the wrestling report. What do you got today? Put your laughing gear on. <laughs> My laughing gear. <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, wrestle uh, load? <laughs> <laughs> and Brian Hawks. <laughs> I, I don't. That's what pretty got paid after his show. I don't. I don't know what wrestle load is. <laughs> oh wait a minute! It's wrestle Cade. Oh, oh that God. makes more sense. Where'd Brian go? <laughs> he's recuperating. He's he's broken. You broke him, Granny. <laughs> Sheesh! I have oh, never. I have. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.